Hello, my name is Terry Naylor. I have earned a bachelor's degree in workplace leadership. During that time, I became interested in conflict management, which led me to a concept called positive conflict. We often associate the word conflict with negativity, avoidance, and hostility, but positive conflict seeks the opposite effect. In an article by Kay and Starleaky, they defined it as constructive conflict management that increases collaboration and reduces avoidance, showing the advantages of mindfulness. We will be discussing why this is important and how to use it in our everyday lives. I am also joined by a few experts who have graciously taken the time to share their thoughts and ideas. Uh, I'm Jess. Um, I'm Jess in Still Love You Bro. Um, me and Chris, uh, we've been friends for a while, and um, at least to me, um, I was not informed that we actually had quite um, opposite political uh, viewpoints, but yet we're still friends. Uh, that's kind of the basis of the podcast. Yeah, I'm the Chris in uh, Still Love You Bro with Chris and Jess. Um, absolutely, I knew that his um, opinions were different than ours, um, my entire families and my entire friends. Um, but we had conversations where uh, we didn't, you know, hate each other. And then we had additional conversations, even though we disagreed. So we thought, why not put that on a podcast? Hi, my name is Heather Ulig, and I'm the Chief People Officer for a healthcare technology company in Franklin, Tennessee. Okay, I'm Shauna Jackson. I am the president of Nashville State Community College, and I have been here since 2018. When asked what positive conflict meant to them, this is what they had to say. So I had to actually look up that term. So I'm glad you're doing this project. It is not something that I think about, but for me, it is definitely the culture I'm trying to create at Nashville State, one where you are really encouraging everyone to use their voice, making the room bigger so that everybody can get around the table, and really recognizing that our differences is what's going to make. What does positive conflict mean to me? Um, exactly that, the basis of our show. Um, when you disagree with someone, uh, I think if you stop and listen to their story and understand, you know, walk a mile in their shoes per se, um, it may either help strengthen your opinion or um, may teach you something. But, you know, positive conflict, which is what I think our show is about, um, lets me learn at least, you know, the other side of the story, what Jess thinks about things, um, you know, what people different than me or maybe raised differently or uh, brought up in a different manner thinks and um, you know I can learn from that. Positive conflict is for me um, well I've always had the belief system uh, that uh, in order for new truth um, to be explored you have to take you know two opposing truths and pit them against the court of public opinion. Um, you know positive conflict can be interpreted to me as you know a healthy debate. Um, it's the antithesis of an echo chamber where Lots of people uh, in the same room or in the same platform all agree, and unfortunately that can lead to um, them creating really extreme ideas that are um, negative for society. So I think it's, it's absolutely uh, necessary for us all to get together um, and in a mature and, and reasonable way have a conflict about our ideas or, you know, this doesn't have to be all politics. You can have it in the workplace. You know, have a conflict with your boss, a positive conflict. Say, hey, this isn't working. This, this needs to be better. And then you two can hash it out. And then hopefully you have a new truth in the end that is going to be better than what you had either way. And to me, positive conflict is a way of bringing teams together with diverse backgrounds and ideas to collaboratively solve problems in the workplace. In the workplace, conflict can lead to stress and decrease productivity. If we harness conflict properly, employees often find that they are more confident in themselves and their position. Here are a few things that positive conflict can do for business as told by Vanessa Rose, a psychotherapist and writer for Mediation.com. It sparks innovation by asking us to step outside our own selves and looking at a solution with a new perspective. This opens new ideas and possibilities that might have otherwise gone unnoticed. It also inspires internal growth by showing where the breakdown of communication is happening in your organization and also brings employees who have previously felt 
or currently feel left out to the forefront, which will allow everyone to feel like they have a seat at the table. Companies can build stronger bonds because conflict inherently strengthens interpersonal relationships. When you can lower your defenses and empathize with others, you may more easily work together to find a common solution and employees may also find that they have more in common than they originally thought. All of this improves job satisfaction by demonstrating to employees that they have more of a voice than they originally thought. This allows those who have been sitting in silence to speak their perspectives. When we allow conflict to happen in a controlled way, we not only let ourselves be heard, but we let others know that we're listening too. And that is important not only in the workplace, but is also a useful practice for everyday living. So how do we integrate these practices? First, we have to set our expectations and establish trust. The solution that is being attempted should be laid out plainly and agreed upon. Training will especially be helpful in the workplace since good communication skills do not come easily or naturally to everyone. Employers can urge their employees to seek personal training or better yet, provide professional development to establish these skills. The use of behavioral quizzes and interview questions may also help in the workplace by identifying different personalities which ultimately lead to different perspectives. Tests like Myers-Briggs, Enneagram, and the one we use at Nashville State, the Bassador, can help identify these personalities. Then by having a mix at the table, new ideas can emerge. The use of mediation is another tool in which we can turn negative conflict into more constructive, positive conflict. This is when a third party facilitates a decision, problem solving, or negotiation. Elgobar, Uima, and Mundate of Oxford state that using mediation in conflict resolution has been proven to prevent the negative consequences of conflict in the workplace in collective bargaining and in interpersonal relations. Now, we'll hear from our real-life managers how they integrate it into their practices. The way that I integrate positive conflict practices into the workplace is by bringing my team together who is comprised of different backgrounds, ethnicities, experiences, and trying to solve a business problem. And so the approach has to be without pride, without ego, um, without having a power trip. You've got to really appreciate people's contributions, ideas, and that's how you end up with a better result in the end. Often we like to call on the same people and uh, get into that group thing where everybody just kind of thinks the same. You're not really solving your problems. You're not really moving anything forward. And so I'm a big believer in pulling people together. Uh, in June of 18 when I came, I was looking for people to talk and integrate with one another. And I wasn't seeing that. We were very siloed. So two things, one was just starting an enrollment management group. Like we're talking about enrollment, all these people need to be around the table. There was nothing based on your title or your role. It was you touch students or you're part of the process. Let's get what the issues are and let's get everyone around the table talking. The other one was the establishment of the College Leadership Council and that was based more on positions but we wanted to make sure every constituency leader was represented so the voice of staff and faculty were heard and it wasn't just the senior administrative leaders and we really tried, at least I did, to make sure everyone got to say something and that we didn't let people just monopolize with their strong opinions because sometimes the quietest voice in the room actually has the best solutions and so it's about creating that environment and that culture where people feel secure and being able to say I disagree respectfully and knowing that it's okay to do that because that's what you want. You want to be able to recognize what the issues are, talk about them, and really work on solutions. Now that we know how positive conflict has been used, let's take a listen to the outcomes of these practices. As I feel Vision 2030, our Student Ready College plan came together, that that was really getting everyone's voice in the room. I could have sat in my chair and wrote a strategic plan or hired a firm that put together the strategic plan, 
but it really was the culmination of voices and having the opportunity for people to get in a room that normally don't talk to one another and realize how very much we have in common of what we want for the college and so how do we talk about that so those are some of the good things now we have a framework a strategic focus and so now the conflict's going to be how do we get there because we're not seeing the results of something still not right and being able to really unearth through conflict that there's a problem there's an issue there's something to be solved and working through that in a positive way will get us where we need to go the outcomes that I have seen by using an approach of positive conflict has been very fruitful. I feel like we have been able to end up with a better program, a better policy, a better communication, a better event, a better approach by having those ideas shared in a way where we can grow. Next, I asked our participants what feedback they have gotten, and from what we've learned so far, their responses shouldn't be a surprise. So the listeners that, that we've spoken with, um, no matter what side they're on, I think that they, they kind of understand the concept, and they, um, you know, they tell us that they are excited to hear that two people can you know, get heated at times. We've had heated debate, but Absolutely. Um, we can both express our opinion like openly and, and safely and, and still walk away. Um, so the feedback that we've gotten is, you know, they've, they've enjoyed uh, knowing that that's possible. I've had feedback from uh, several uh, people I've known uh, like throughout my college years. And um, uh, some of them are uh, different political views than I am. And they still listen to the show because, um, I think we benefit from having, uh, obviously, a point of view that, you know, at least someone's going to agree with you or someone's going to agree with me or somewhere in the middle. And it's not just, you know, one side railing off into space um, about a particular topic. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have personally haven't got a lot of feedback from folks other than, um, you know, that I encounter in my daily life, just, you know, folks I work with, family. Uh, but those who have reached out that have listened externally, uh, they seem to appreciate the concept of the show uh, quite a bit and, you know, they listen regularly. So it makes me feel good inside. At least we got, uh, we're making a difference sound sure. So the feedback from my teams has always been very positive in feeling like they are included in decision making, that they are adding value, that they're at the grassroots effort of whatever we're trying to do. And they feel good about the end result because they know that they have had an opportunity to contribute and even if your ideas are not accepted or aren't used in the end you still have a sense of ownership accountability and you're feeling like you're part of the team you're engaging and you're really working towards that same end goal that everyone else is in the company and I think it's just a great, um, a great approach to use, and it's been successful for me and my team. Well, I, you know, people don't always directly talk to me, Terry, <laughs> but I'll give a good example. There was an employee for, uh, I do a quarterly new hire orientation for new employees, and there was a person who left right at 18 that has now come back, and they were able to talk about what a difference they're seeing in the culture and how people feel about the college and so that was reassuring to me that um, well not every area may feel the same that people can feel the change that's happening here and that it's positive so that's what bubbles back to me you know there's still all these little pockets but for overall people know that you know it is okay we're moving forward we're not there yet but we're working together to get there yeah I mean I've seen um, that people aren't like you were saying, they're not as quiet as they used to be. They're, uh, they feel a little better about giving their ideas and speaking up in some of the meetings I've been in. So I've seen it since, Good. since yeah, since it was five years almost, yeah. As we have learned, conflict does not need to be avoided nor thought of negatively. There are a whole host of tools available for the workplace and everyday life. When we give everyone a seat at the table and work together in a constructive way, new, exciting ideas will start to emerge. I hope 
you have not only changed your mind about conflict, but will also take some of these ideas into your own hands. Um, my main thing would be listen. Uh, sometimes it's easy to talk and express your opinion, but um, we find it very difficult as humans to sometimes just shut up <laughs> and listen. Um, and that has been my um, saving grace. And, and there have been some episodes we've had on our podcast where uh, Jess has hit a top a hot topic mm -hmm. issue and uh and it, it hit home like it hits the heart chords and um you know i find that that rage inside like a lot of people get where you just want to start spewing um you know your own opinions and, and and backing that up but um what helps is just to stop and take a deep breath and um and listen you know finish actually listening to what they're saying because a lot of times you tune out what's being said when you're angry or mm -hmm. furious about what's being said and that's where it breaks down. So I have to stop and, and listen to understand that. Oh, I wouldn't have even thought about it personally. Uh, I will just say that I am glad to now know what the term is. Uh, even though um, it's been years since I've been in school and I understand about managing conflict, I'm glad to hear it being elevated in the term because I do think when you hear conflict, people automatically think confrontation, negative. They don't want to be a part of that but they probably are part of what could be a great solution. And so just continuing to foster that culture to say, we're not always in agreement, but we're going to get in a room, we're going to work it out, your voice will be heard, and then we're going to move forward together. Well, I think it's great that you were integrating the practices and didn't, I didn't know. have the, the term, so, so that was great. I will always use positive conflict practices in my approach in the workplace. Like I said, I just feel like, you know, when you're trying to make decisions in a siloed environment, you aren't really going to think about the whole picture. And it's very important for me as an HR person, as a business person who happens to deal in people, that my approach is consultative and collaborative within the company. And similarly within my team, to ensure that my team is capable of handling these issues when I'm not around or when they are going to grow into a HR leader one day and they can adopt some of these leadership practices and positive conflict practices in order to continue to be successful in their own careers. I think it leads to higher engagement. It leads to higher retention among your teams. Like I said, people have a sense of accountability, of ownership, and they will respect you for it. And if Chris and Jess can have a completely opposite mindset and discuss it and still be friends, then anybody can. Absolutely.